Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. The face of comedienne Lucille Ball, immortalised as Lucy Ricardo on the television programme I Love Lucy, is said to have been seen by more people worldwide than any other. Known as Lucy to generations of television viewers who delighted at her rubber-faced antics and zany impersonations, she was a shrewd businesswoman, serious actress and Broadway star as well. But the perfection that Lucille Ball broadcast to American homes veneered a much more complicated, intriguing truth. How was Lucille Ball involved in shady business in her past? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Lucille Ball's Scurrilous Past the scandalous past of clothless photos and casting couches. Many people consider Lucille Ball the queen of comedy, and the Chicago Tribune referred to her as TV's first lady. Comic actress Lucille Ball wielded enormous influence, both in terms of scope, production and technology, over television situation comedies with her Emmy-winning series I Love Lucy, which helped elevate her from hard-working film actress to one of the biggest stars of the small screen. Lucille Ball had an impact on the world of television that few others will ever be able to match. The actress and comedian was a trailblazer in a myriad of ways, whether it was daring to be a woman in comedy, being one of the first women to act while visibly pregnant on television, or normalising an interracial marriage in front of the entire world. Indeed, Ball projected an aura of fearlessness which is the enduring legacy of one of Hollywood's most beloved stars of all time. But believe it or not, there's more to Ball than her incredible career accomplishments, as she was also a human being just like anyone else. She had her ups and downs throughout life, which included bringing children into the world, marrying and later divorcing Desi Arnaz, and remarrying before passing away from heart issues in 1989. So, what else is there to know about the pioneering and intrepid Lucille Ball? What was she like in real life? What made her tick? Everyone loves Lucy, but she had a sordid past of her own as well. The I Love Lucy star went to extreme lengths to make it in Hollywood, having producers subject her to the casting couch to get roles early on. Ball scrounged for food for a time, but she began to find minor success over the years. Lucille Ball was born on August 6, 1911 in Jamestown, New York. Although she was known for her deft comedic abilities, she didn't come from an especially humorous or even happy family. After losing her father when she was only four years old, Ball's mother remarried and the preschooler went to live with her stepfather's grandparents. As Ball tells it, they were strict and had old country ideas. They treated other children the way I wanted to be treated, but not me. They did that to discipline me, but for me it was the wrong way to bring up a child. Perhaps unwittingly, however, that method of arguably incorrect parenting led Ball to discover the power of humour. It gave me a feeling of frustration and of reaching out and trying to please, she explained. I found the quickest and easiest way to do that was to make people laugh. Ball determined at an early age to become an actress and left high school at age 15 to enrol in a drama school in New York City. Taking acting lessons in New York City as a teen, she was overshadowed by fellow student Betty Davis, who she found snobby and intimidating. She also studied dance under Martha Graham for several days before Graham asked her to drop the class. You're hopeless as a dancer, Graham told her. You're like a quarterback taking up ballet perhaps you could find work as a soda jerk. At 14, Ball wound up in a relationship with 23-year-old Johnny DeVita, who ran illegal booze in from Canada and functioned as the town gigolo. He was a roughneck alcohol smuggler who used to beat her up. She later moved in with DeVita and shaped parts of her personality around his gangster ways. Living with DeVita catalyzed some personality changes in her. She developed a foul mouth to match his own and those of his hoodlum friends. Later, while auditioning for roles in Times Square under the stage names Montana Ball and Diane Belmont, before settling on her given name, 
she scrounged to survive. Full posed without clothes in modelling shoots and turned tricks to make ends meet during years spent trying to make it in the showbiz industry. She often ate food left over by diners in local cafes and brought a handbag with a plastic liner on dates so she could take home half-eaten steaks. She was briefly cast in the popular theatrical review The Ziegfeld Follies, but was fired after two weeks because, she was told, you've got no tits and you can't dance. Distraught, she briefly considered a life as a gun mole for DeVita, thinking, I could join Johnny on his liquor runs down from Canada, with the police chasing after us. She eventually found work as a model, and as she sought acting roles, received advice from Leela Rogers, mother of her good friend Ginger Rogers, that she would later follow. If you want to be a star within two years, get auditioned on the casting couch, Leila told her. That's the advice I gave my own daughter. She soon got work as a model and became one of the best-known socialites in the city. Becoming one of Manhattan's most popular models, Ball was a regular at hot night spots like the Cotton Club. She dated an array of prominent men. She dated Albert Cubby Broccoli, who would go on to produce the James Bond films, then spent time with his cousin, Pat De Chico. De Chico, a rumoured associate of Lucky Luciano, would later marry film star Thelma Todd and heiress Gloria Vanderbilt. Ball told friends at the time that she had hoped to marry him and confided to actress Joan Blondell, Pat taught me tricks in bed I think he learned in a brothel in Shanghai. But her association with gangsters almost had dire consequences. Dancing in Harlem one night, she suddenly sensed danger, grabbed a friend's hand and ran from the club. The man she was afraid of wound up gunning a man down. And while staying at Manhattan's Kimberley Hotel, she was taking a bath one night and, while she was soaking in the tub, she was fired upon and the bathtub was riddled with bullets. Miraculously, she escaped injury, but the room downstairs was flooded. Because she was moderately successful as a model and a poster on which she appeared brought her to the attention of the Hollywood studios and won her spots in Roman Scandal, Blood Money, Kid Millions and other movies. She later relocated to Hollywood, where she starred in more than 50 films. She dated many of Hollywood's leading men of the era, including Orson Welles, Henry Fonda and Jimmy Stewart. By the end of 1934, a casting drought led Ball to Columbia Pictures, head Harry Cohn. She'd been told that Cohn was ruthless, self-centred and mean-spirited, and that every female under contract to him had to submit to him sexually. Cohn reportedly once told comedian Red Skelton, I'm entitled to the broads because I have them under contract. For Ball, it was a matter of practicality. I've resisted so far, but other gals like Joan Crawford did all right, Ball told a friend. At a party one night, I heard her tell some people that the casting couch was better than the cold, hard floor. After sleeping with Cohn, Ball began to get cast in better movies, but her career still evolved slowly, as she was repeatedly told by casting agents and others that she had no talent for acting and was not large-breasted enough to become a sex symbol. She signed with RKO Pictures after her release from Columbia, but at RKO she continually lost parts to rival and future pin-up superstar Betty Grable. This caused her to make two key changes. To distinguish herself from the blonde actress, she dyed her hair red for the first time. Others believed that this was also when she began taking her craft more seriously. It was because of Gable that Lucille quit yawning her way through a picture and did some real acting. Over the coming years, Ball began distinguishing herself on film for her talent with a wisecrack. It was Milton Berle who was the first person to talk to her about the potential of television. She remained in Hollywood and appeared in increasingly larger roles in a succession of movies. Carnival, Stage Door, Room Service, Five Came Back and Too Many Girls, in which she starred and which also featured the popular Cuban band leader and actor Desi Arnaz. It was here that she first set eyes on the play's 22-year-old lead, Desi Arnaz, who had already enjoyed flings with Grable, Rogers and superstar Carmen Miranda. For ten years they conducted separate careers, he as a band leader and she as a movie actress who was usually seen in B-grade comedies. 
but it was only after she teamed up with husband Arnez in I Love Lucy that she became a household name. The two wouldn't officially meet until 1940 at RKO Pictures. The next day Arnez moved in with her. Lucille was 28 and Desi was 23. It wasn't love at first sight, but they eloped the following November. By spring 1952, less than a year after its debut on CBS, I Love Lucy was the number one TV show in the country, and its stars, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, were the nation's number one twosome. In 1950, Ball and her husband created Desilu Productions. The company not only produced I Love Lucy, but it went on to create other hit television shows like The Dick Van Dyke Show and Star Trek. Ball and Arnaz divorced in 1960. When the marital relationship ended, Arnaz decided to sell his ownership of Desilu Productions to Ball. The deal made her the first woman to own a major studio. Ball continued her successful career in film, television and theatre. Gossip columnist Hedda Hopper dubbed them Hollywood's ideal couple, and an adoring American public took Lucy and Desi for what they appeared to be on the TV screen a wacky but lovable housewife and her occasionally exasperated but eternally devoted husband. The facts were far different. It was a rocky marriage, became unadulterated hell during the show's run thanks to Desi's constant drinking and philandering and Lucy's obsessive need for control on the set. Lucy and Desi's divorce was final in 1960. Both eventually married other people but as long as I Love Lucy reruns flicker on a TV screen somewhere, their names will remain forever linked. Divorcing after 20 years, the couple's relationship was tumultuous from the start, though Arnaz subjected Ball to his alcoholism and infidelity over their two decades together. The couple maintained a strong connection to each other after their split, which lasted right up until Arnaz's death. Arnaz died on December 2, 1986, at the age of 69, though at the time he and Ball had remarried other people. Arnaz's second wife, Edith, died in 1985. The I Love Lucy team were still bonded. Arnaz had been ill with cancer for many months, and my family and I have been praying for his release from this terrible ordeal, Ball said in a statement, according to the Los Angeles Times. Desi died early this morning in his daughter's arms. Our relationship had remained very close, very amiable over the years, and now I'm grateful to God that Desi's suffering is over. The date was March 29, 1989. The most famous comedian in the history of show business was about to make her final TV appearance. The great Lucille Ball was appearing at the annual Academy Awards ceremony, along with the world's most popular comedian, Bob Hope. Hope had talked Lucy into making the joint appearance after many phone calls and much begging. Finally, Lucy had conceded but she hated the very idea of it. Lucy hated putting on the wig she had chosen to wear. She complained the netting gave her a goddamn headache. Goddamn hope, Lucy complained. No one cares what the hell he looks like, but everybody cares what I look like. God, I'm so tired of myself. Lucy did her final TV appearance with Hope, which went smoothly enough, and then she had to go back to real life. Lucy had been a bit down. She had never completely recovered from the death of her former husband, Desi Arnaz. Her most intimate friends saw the obvious about Lucy's love for Desi. Although she was in a comfortable marriage to Gary Morton, she had always carried a torch for Desi. Desi always sent Lucy flowers on her birthday and their anniversary, and the two kept in close touch by phone throughout the years. Additionally, the dismal failure of her recent TV series, Life with Lucy, weighed heavily on her mind. Lucy occupied her days watching TV, playing Scrabble and Backgammon, and having the occasional drinks of bourbon, slushies as she called them. A few days later, on April 17, 1989, Lucy started experiencing shooting pains in her chest. Her husband called her doctor and tried to talk Lucy into going to the hospital. Lucy refused to go until Gary called Lucy's daughter, who finally convinced her, but Lucy only agreed to go if she could get nicely dressed and put on her makeup. Upon arriving, Lucy was given seven hours of open heart surgery at the hospital. Her operation was a success and, after a few days, she returned home. But sadly, after Lucy arrived home, she was told she couldn't live in her own bedroom. 
she would have to live in the guest room downstairs. Since Lucy's house had no elevators, the doctors wanted to make sure Lucy did not do any stair climbing. This apparently broke Lucy's heart. She did not want to live in a makeshift bedroom and she did not want to be treated like an invalid. The next morning Lucy's surgically repaired aorta ruptured again and she went into full cardiac arrest. She was rushed back to the hospital but this time the doctors couldn't save her. A star of stage, screen, television and radio, Lucille Ball is an indisputable American legend whose comedic talent and work ethic combined to make her a living legend. Her work is still beloved worldwide. Many years after, she arrived in Hollywood. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Lucille Ball? She left an impact on the business and entertainment industries that endures still today.